We talked about the manger. You must be at the manger. You stop there, then you move into the house. And, but you can't stay there. That's the whole idea of the series. You've got to move on and progress. You've got to go on. Before you reach there to evangelize the world, this is a process every believer must walk, must go through. You can't skip any one of them. That's the problem. We want power, but we skip this. There is no real power in the upper room unless we know the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and conforming to his death. So you can't skip it, unfortunately. You have to go through it. Today we are talking from Luke chapter 3, verse 20 and to 23. How many of you watch that program? I don't. I used to just glimpse it. The voice. You know how the voice, the judges' backs are turned and a singer, performer will be there and they will keep on singing until one of the judges decides that that voice is going to make a hit and they will turn around and hit the buzzer and choose that. Choose that person for um, to be on the team. Well, my emphasis today is on the voice. And when you hear this voice, you will turn around. And I hope you hit the buzzer and say, speak, Lord. Hey, Sean, good to see you and Monica. Bless you. Thank you for coming. We will be praying for them after service. If you need special prayer, just come to the altar. Our ministers will lay hands on you and pray for you. Hallelujah. So we're talking about the voices, well, not one of my main emphasis, but, but my topic is joy. Oh, let me read the text. Verse 21 of Luke. Good job, guys. Now, when all the people, all, all the people were baptized. Action speaks louder than words. So when they were baptized, they said something. They spoke. That was a silent voice, a voice of action. There are five voices here. Uh, so the people spoke in action. and came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. In, in Matthew, you will see uh, John and Jesus having a conversation. And John said, no, 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 no. This is not how it should be. I, I cannot baptize you. you the one who should be baptizing me. And so it's not recorded here, but Jesus also spoke. And his voice was heard in conversation with um, John. And he said, no, let all, I'll, I'll mention that just now. And being baptized and praying, and the key word for me today is praying. I'll show you the benefits of this and the power of it and the understatement of it. And praying, the heaven was opened. I will show you the results of praying. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily shape. Like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. And I will have a question for you. Is God pleased with your living and with your life? And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. And he was supposed to go into the begets. I want to speak on the subject, joy at the Jordan. That if you should ever come here, you will receive a sort of a fullness of joy. It's such as nowhere is recorded where the triune Godhead was at, um, involved. The Father spoke from heaven. The Holy Spirit came down like a dove. The word of God, Emmanuel, was present. And so the Trinity, the triune Godhead, appeared at the scene. It's the most marvelous scene. And so we want to stay there. 
We want to stay where God is. We want to stay where the triune presence is. And that's a wonderful thing. I think it's a joy to be at the Jordan. Hallelujah. Praise God. As a matter of fact, it's so important in history that right now in Israel, they are spending over $100 million to revamp the so-called baptismal site of Jesus and John, making it a vast tourist attraction. It's still relevant. It's still alive today. This is not just history. People are experiencing the joy of the Jordan. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. And my theme would be the power of a praying man. The power of a praying man. And you will see that Jesus is the praying man. Yeah, he did so many miracles. Everything he did was a result of prayer. He chose his disciples as a result of prayer. He worked miracles as a result of prayer. He was successful in the garden of Gethsemane as a result of prayer. He is a model prayer warrior. He is the one we have to pattern our lives after if we want a strong prayer life. Let's pray like Jesus prayed. Hallelujah. Somebody help me out. Hallelujah. The power of a praying man. The man who talks to God will have God talk to him. It's right here in the text. When he was praying, a voice came from heaven and spoke to him. You want to hear from God? Let's pray. Because prayer is not a one-way conversation. It's you talking to God and God speaking to you. The problem is we talk and we run away and we don't wait to hear from God. But he is going to uh, talk. He's going to show up. It's like the man who was knocking on the door at midnight for his friend. He had knocked and knocked and a voice said, don't bother me. If he had turned away, he would have missed out the blessing. You've got to keep on knocking, knocking, knocking until the door is open. Hallelujah. Praise him. The power of a praying man. From the manger to the upper room, where are you? I told you that the theme for the whole series will be moving on. Last week we talked about move out. Move out of the manger and move on. Today I want you to move up. Move up out of the Jordan and move on. Because if you stay too long in the Jordan, you will only be a wet disciple. And not until you get to the upper room will you be a fire-filled disciple. So if you want to be on fire, you can't stay there. It's a beautiful experience. You must experience the Jordan. But if you stay there too long, you'll be missing all that God has for you. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why we love the Jordan and why we want to stay there. Because we're in love with the dove. I'm in love with the dove. I'd rather be in love with the dove than the raven. Out of the ark of Noah, he sent a dove and a raven. Ah, the raven didn't come back. You see, people who are filled with the spirit of the dove will always come back to church. Oh, come on. You can't drive them out of church. You can't push them out of church. They will keep coming back to church. Because they're dove people. Don't go and buy a dove soup now. That uh, is fine. But if you belong to the clan of the dove and not the raven... You know, raven is interesting. My wife is doing a sermon for Mother's Day, and she's doing on the raven, so I will leave that. But um, raven is a something else. So let's, let's look at our text. Up verse before, Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by John, by, by John the Baptist for Herodias, his brother's Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, he was publicly rebuked by John the Baptist. John the Baptist didn't care or fear anyone. He was a preacher of righteousness. He came to declare the truth and to call the nation to repentance. He looked at them and said, ye nation of vipers. 
and then call them adulterers? Repent, turn. There's a great opportunity here, he says. And so they all came, wondering if John was the Messiah. And so when Jesus and John met, I want you to just kind of understand this. Two covenants met. John representing the old covenant. The Bible says John is the end of the law and the prophets. Jesus is the beginning of grace and truth. So the two covenants met. And not long before, John was put in the prison and beheaded. You see, these two covenants cannot coexist. Jesus and John will never coexist. One has to go and uh, one will stay. And I pray that you never get so caught up with the old covenant that you miss the blessings of the new covenant. So... We often wonder why John, probably 31 years old, had to lose his head. And Jesus did nothing about it. Because he sent a message to, to, to Jesus saying, are you, are, you, are you really the Messiah? This man filled with the spirit from his mother's womb, grew up in the wilderness, prepared the way of the Lord's coming. When he saw him, he said, Thou art the Lamb of God. What happened? This man was in prison. You see, prison can change your view of things. When all you look at is four walls, you wonder where God is. When you give God so much praise and you exalt the Son and the Messiah, and now look where you are. You are in prison. And you're about to lose your head. And he's saying, uh, sent a message back to his disciples saying him, go tell John the dead is raised, the leper is cleansed. And this is, John is not interested in that. John wants to know what about his life. And so sometimes we reach those desperations. But I have a spiritual application for that. We must, if we are to honor Jesus Christ, if we are to exalt him and let him be the singular focused person, then we must lose our heads. Spiritually, that is. Of all the things Jesus said, cut off your hand, pluck off your eye, he never said take off your head. But you see, the head is our problem. And so the head must decrease so that Jesus can increase. Can I hear amen? And so the two covenants cannot exist. One imprisons uh, the, uh, and the other sets free. So we follow Jesus Christ who is able to set us free. We go on. And so after that little thing with John in prison, all the people were baptized. And Jesus was also baptized. So I could go into a lot of arguments on this point, I which will I, not, I will not do. Why did Jesus get baptized? Only sinners get baptized. So why did he get baptized? The theory goes in some false teaching that Jesus had to become a sinner and he had to be born again for us to experience what he did. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Jesus never sinned. Jesus was not a sinner. When he offered his body in Calvary, he, the sinless one, offered a perfect sacrifice to God. So he did not sin. He explained to John, let's do this for righteousness sake. Let's fulfill righteousness. I'm going to tell you something now. There are some things you don't have to do because it's not mandatory to, for you to do it. But you do it to please God. You do it to bless your brothers and sisters who are weaker than you. If strong meat offends, don't eat it. It takes mature people to do that. So if you have not been baptized in water, 
and you had the opportunity to do so, I am going to leave that in the hands of God whether you're going to make it into heaven or not. We do not believe in baptismal regeneration, meaning that you, when you're baptized, then you're regenerated. But we believe that when you are regenerated, you will be baptized. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. If you have not been baptized in water, you need to be baptized in water by God's grace. Can I hear an amen? Okay, now I'm getting into the meat of what I had to say. And I won't be long. I'll tell you like um, Zaza Gabor said to her eighth husband, I won't be keeping you very long. It came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and he was in the present tense. He was praying. Jesus was praying. Why? He didn't take baptism uh, a simple thing. Romans 6 will explain the significance of what a baptism and what it means. So he was praying. He started out his public ministry at about 30 years of age praying. You can never go wrong when you start your day praying. When prayer leads the way, you will never go astray. Give him praise if you're going to give him praise. Hallelujah. And he of all the teachers in scripture taught more about prayer than anyone else. Insomuch when his disciples saw the success of his ministry, they say, not teach us how to work miracles. Not te don't teach us how to walk on water. Lord, teach us to pray. They were impressed. They were uh, stunned by his prayer life. And if we don't have a prayer life, we will have no other kind of life. I am, I am, I'm humbly saying everything stems from a strong prayer life. You've got to have a strong prayer life. You can pray without... There's so much scriptures to, to quote on prayer. Pray without ceasing. Pray. Men ought to pray always and don't faint. Don't give up in your praying. In everything with thanksgiving and but everything, be not anxious for ever, anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made. Those are three descriptions of the same thing. Prayer, supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. So, so prayer is vital and Jesus started out praying. And this is what happened when you begin to pray. And when he prayed, the heaven was opened. Oh, my God. The result of prayer. When you're praying, I am telling you, heaven is going to open up for you. John said, I saw a door in heaven open in Revelation. And down in chapter 11, he said, and the heaven was opened. And I saw uh, lightning and thunder and I heard voices. This is my point. When the heaven opened, you will hear a something from heaven. You keep praying, heaven will open, and God will speak to you. Hallelujah. Has heaven been shut up for you? Well, I have news for you. Heaven is open for business. You can call heaven, and you don't have to wait in line. And you don't have to go online. Heaven's line is 24-7 and open to the heart that would come and say, Lord, I come to you in Jesus' name. Heaven is open. It's open to you and open for me. Let's make use of an open heaven. So while praying, the heaven opened up and God said, see if I will not open the windows of heaven. And sprinkle you. I will pour. And when God say pour, he doesn't mean drip. You know when you go to the hospital to put a bag and you get drips? 
Drips is important because they can't give you the whole bag at the same time. So they give you drips. Well, I want to tell you there are times when Christians go on drips, but there are times when God can give you everything at the same day. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, if I will not pour out, pour out a blessing upon you, that you wouldn't have room, no room, no room for the blessing. Oh, God's not bluffing. Prayer will open the heaven and prayer will bring it down. But more importantly than that, when he prayed and the heaven was open, the Holy Ghost came upon him. Listen, if I ever want the Holy Ghost, I want him straight from heaven. I don't want nobody whispering in my neck. Shibba, 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 shibba. I don't want a Holy Ghost from here. I want a Holy Ghost from up there. I want him to come down upon me. I want him to come down in his fullness like he did on the day of Pentecost. And we're going to get there. But right now, let's pray for the coming down of the Holy Ghost in our churches, in our families, in our walk, in our running, in our life. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost power is moving like a magnet. Let him move. Let him move. Oh, let him move. Move, Holy Spirit. And prayer will bring him down. And prayer will activate the supernatural. And praying people will have the heavens open. Praying people will have the Holy Ghost upon them. And people may see you dove-like. They may see how gentle you are. You cannot have the fruit of the Spirit and be arrogant. Thank you, baby. You can't have the fruit of the Spirit and be proud. And you're better than everybody else. It don't work like that. That's a world. The Holy Spirit upon your life makes you different. Makes you more like Jesus. Oh, it keeps you humble. Makes you loving. When you get a hug and you give a hug, people can feel the love. They can feel the genuineness of you. You're real. We emit, we give out things from our spirit man when we touch. So praise God. Prayer. And fifthly, prayer brings the heavenly voice. And a voice came from heaven. Want to hear from heaven? Pray. You want to hear from heaven? Say, God, speak to me. And you might be fortunate to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, hearing with God. He may vocally and verbally and audibly speak to you. I've had that happen once or twice in my life. But the everyday talking of God is this. You pray and read your Bible and God, let me tell you, there are so many ways God can speak to you directly from this word that blow your mind. It'll blow your mind of the relevancy of God's word. I remember clearly one time, I was about 21 years old, and I was supposed to go to the United States, come up to Oregon, uh, Open Bible, sponsoring me for my education they had liked me. They thought I had potential. Poor fella. <laughs> so he was making arrangement in Oregon Bible College for me to go. And I went to get a visa. And they denied me the visa. I was too poor. I had nothing to show that was coming back. And I said, Lord, this is a great opportunity for me. And um, I, I started to, well, I don't. In those days, I used to cut the Bible. You know what cut the Bible means? You open it random when you put your finger. Not because you don't know better. I didn't know better, so I, I opened my Bible and I put my finger. You know what I put my finger on? A verse in, the, in, in uh, Isaiah said, Thou shalt not go out by haste nor by flight. I said, Lord of mercy. I didn't know that had a kind of verse in the Bible. Flight. So, seven years later, I would get a 10-year visa, and that was the end of the story. But, but 
God is so relevant in his word, you'll be amazed to see what this Bible has for you when you pray and want God to say, he will say it from his word. Now, I'm not against prophets today. I'm not against prophecy. I love it. I think we should all prophesy. Paul said all of us should have a prophetic word. But some of them are overdoing it. Some of them are making money out of it. <laughs> all right. We had the, uh, not, not to cast aspersions on anybody, but some of the biggest national prophets made some profits on political scenarios. Oh, I don't know where them fellas should hide their face. Because it flopped. It failed. It didn't happen. You cannot be the number one prophet in this country and make such a prophetic announcement. And it turned, flipped. It was not of God. Lying spirit. Lying spirit. And Moses said, if you give one prophecy, just one, and it's not true, you're a false prophet. Moses said that. So we want to hear the voice. Paul said, there are many voices that have gone out into the world. And uh, let me give you five voices. The, the voice of the Father. You will hear him on Mount Transfiguration again speaking. Uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the little voice outside of uh, uh, um, Elijah's cave, that small still voice speaking. Uh, you will hear the Bible speaking. You will hear angels speaking. And so there are many voices, but which voice should you really want to hear? Uh, Paul makes it very clear. In former times, in old days, God spoke by the prophet, but in these last days, he's speaking by his son. Jesus is God's message. Jesus is relevant. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He will never go out of style. You want to hear from God? Hear from Jesus. Uh, study Jesus. Understand Jesus. And you'll know the heart and mind of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You want to hear from heaven? He himself said, my sheep, they know my voice. A stranger and a hireling. They will not listen to. You know why you are in this church today? You heard his voice. Amen. You've obeyed his voice. You could have been somewhere else. You, there are better churches. There are bigger churches. Fancier stuff. But you are here because you've heard God's voice and you obeyed that voice. And I hope you get a blessing today for that. Amen. Hallelujah. And the voice from heaven said... Pointing to his son. You, thou art my beloved son. It's a sense of ownership. My son. And I want to say with much joy that when I was at the Jordan experience, I personally heard God say to me, you are my son. You're my daughter. There is nothing more comforting than to hear your father say, you are mine. You are mine. You see, outside of Christ, God is a consuming fire. Inside of Christ, he's a loving, reconciling father. He loves you. You are beloved. When you receive the spirit of adoption, and he brought you into the family. You became his beloved son and his beloved daughter. You were accepted by God. You must never feel rejections no matter who reject you. God will never reject you. You are in good company. Hallelujah. Your father loves you. His son loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. The church loves you. You need to start loving yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. It don't work like that. Start with you first. Hallelujah. So the voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with a sense of ownership. Have you heard, do you know that you are a child of God? Are you still wondering if, 
if I keep on going to church and do what I'm supposed to do, will I, will I feel the sense of ownership? You don't need that. The Holy Spirit. You see, when you pray and the Holy Spirit comes down and Jesus is the Lord, you will definitely hear his spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. You'll have a divine witness. And nobody will have to tell you, you are a child of God. But just in case you didn't hear it, I am showing you now, the spirit of God will tell you, you belong to him. Hallelujah. I'm almost done here. God complimented his son. And this is where I'm going to leave you. This is my beloved son. With whom I am well pleased. So the question is, is God pleased with us? Hebrews 11.5 says, And Enoch walked with God. And God took him, for he pleased God. Ooh. When your life is pleasing to God, God will walk with you. And when you're walking with God, he'll take you out of every difficulty. Because in his presence and with his company, you can't fail. So walk on with God, that's pleasing to God. Hebrews 13, 6, 13, 16 says, do good, be hospitable. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. You see, uh, Roland and yesterday, driver and Trevor and Vilma. You see, sometimes you're out of the flesh so bad, you, you can't come back down into the directory, you know. He got up, arranged a trip to go to the funeral down Fort Lauderdale or somewhere there. He got up early, before 6 o'clock in the morning to go for the van. Sacrifice. Had to wait an hour for the van. Came here, loaded up, drove down, drove up, took back the van. Didn't have to do that. A couple didn't have to do that. But with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Congratulations. You have pleased the Lord in pleasing 12, 14 people. Thank you, Jesus. And the two negatives... There are many scriptures. I'll just give you two more and we're done. Romans 8, 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot, not will not, cannot please God. If you and I are walking in the flesh, what is walking in the flesh? Just being me. Just being a normal human being. Just being Adamic. Just being the natural self, living in the five senses, that is carnal. We've got to go out of the five senses into the sense of the Holy Spirit. We've got to walk in the Spirit, talk in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, operate in the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, cannot. And one we use so often, Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it is impossible. Impossible to please God. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. His faith was in the Father that pleased him. His humility was before God that pleased him. He was all, the, the chorus is saying, everywhere he went, he was doing good. Hallelujah. He cleansed the leper. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He was always doing good for somebody. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. 
Can God say that about us? Can God say, daughter, son, I am so pleased with you. Or will he speak to us from the church of Laodicea saying, I have a few things against you. You've done well here, but here you haven't done well. So it's so good to examine ourselves and see whether we be in the faith or the faith is in us. Joy at the Jordan. The voice. How do you get the voice from heaven? You pray. Praying will bring, will open the heavens. Praying will bring down the Holy Spirit. Praying will shape you like a dove and give you the dove-like character. Prayer will bring the heavenly voice. Prayer will give you a compliment. Prayer will signal your ownership. This is my son. But most of all, you will hear, you, my child, I'm very pleased with. May we live life pleasing unto God. May our living please Him. May our giving please Him. May our sacrifices please Him. May our prayer lives please Him. May our hugging and making sacrifices and doing things that we were not supposed to do, going the extra mile, please the Lord. Let's do that. Joy of the Jordan. We visited Jordan. We enjoyed the experience. Don't stay there. We're going to the Mount of Temptation next week. We're going to join Beyonce. Fighting temptations. Could you give God praise? If, if you're blessed today. If you have the joy of the Lord. If you know that your prayer life is okay. Give Him praise. Give the Lord praise. Father, we'll thank you. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Oh, Lord. We praise you for the Holy Ghost coming down. We praise you for opening the heavens. We praise you for the power of God. We praise you to hear your voice today. In Jesus' name, we praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you.